G'day and welcome to Shattered the Podcast. Today's podcast is a little bit different. I want to normalise the conversation around mental illness, living with mental illness, what it's like, how it feels. And the last couple of weeks have been a bit tough. I've had a few really extreme incidents and this week's podcast reflects that. I'm going to go a bit emo (laughs) and I apologise for that. Um, but this week's podcast, although different, uh, it's raw, it's honest, and as always, I hope you dig it. Subscribe, like, and share, please. Welcome to Shattered the Podcast. Sharing the lived experience of mental illness on a father, a mother, a family. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So this one's a little bit different. Start off by saying everything's fine. (laughs) I want to try and explain that even though sometimes on the outside you can look, you can feel, like you're on top of things. But some days, I don't know why, you're just down. And nothing's happened. Nothing's wrong. And yet, I'm struggling. So why would I put up a podcast like this? You would assume that a podcast is to entertain, to take the listener on a journey. Hopefully they listen to it in the car. Hopefully they share it. But the bottom line is I really don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care about me. Um, What I care about is the fact that mental illness has stolen so much from me and my family and my wife in particular. What I care about is trying to ensure that other people don't go through what I've been through. Because in ways, I've exacerbated my own illness. You know that I was hurt in the workplace. Um, you can listen to other podcasts if you want the graphic story. Um, there's one that I did that is called, uh, bad boys, bad boys. What did they do? Uh, where I talk about the two days that I had, uh, police intervention on the day I was injured and the day I tried to take my life. But the thing is, before I got hurt, I knew that something was wrong. I had my first panic attack at a time where uh, I was not diagnosed with anything. I wasn't even injured. Uh, It was a bad situation and... I think about that a lot. I think about what would have happened if I had have got help then, like serious help, and made some dramatic changes in my lifestyle. Like I was burnt out in my job. I was completely burnt out. I was over it. Uh, I was blaming the clients for their disabilities. I was feeling outraged at the demands that they were putting on me all clear signs that I was experiencing massive burnout. What would have happened 
if I had of acted then, if I had of sat down and got some real help, I would have had some depressive episodes. I would have probably had another panic attack because I've had a bunch more since. <laughs> What would have happened? I'm a guy that believes that a man should earn his own way. I'm a believer that a man should provide for his family. The fact that I can't, can't work a full-time job the fact that I struggle doing any kind of work at all grieves me in ways that you can't even imagine. The idea that my wife is missing out on things because of my mental illness, missing out on holidays, missing out on doing nice things for herself, things that would happen if I just could work a full-time job, I know that I could go into the public service. I've done it. I know that I could be successful at it. But I also know that being in the public service drove me to a breakdown in my eventual suicide attempt. Because I tried to force myself to do something that I wasn't mentally capable of doing. So what am I doing today? What's the point of today? I, I don't want anybody to ever feel sorry for me. I am not a victim. The choices I made were the ones that led to my mental illness. The choice to stay in a career that was damaging me because I couldn't see that there would be anything else for me. Not, not through my mental illness, but just in life. I just thought, you know, I'm a carer and that's it, you know. Can't do anything else. What I'll say is this. This is, this is my plan today. My plan today is to stay another day. My plan is not to try and fix myself today. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do things that are not stressful for me. I'm going to stay away from things that make me anxious, thought processes. I'm going to try and distract myself. But most of all, and, and I've got to thank my friend Millie for this, the ability to be able to articulate it. I'd done it, but I didn't know how to articulate it until Millie pointed it out. It was just be patient. Know that this too shall pass. This feeling that I'm feeling now, this, this desperate sense of failure, I had a, an incident earlier this week. I volunteer at a place that I'm not allowed to say where I volunteer, and I wouldn't want to because I don't want to embarrass this person. But I think it's important for you to understand that I was in a situation where I'm volunteering and, and somebody took an issue with something I was doing. And it was, my boss had told me to do it. I wasn't doing anything wrong. But I was busy. I was hectic. I was just trying to get the work done. I got in their way a little bit, mildly. 
Like I put a couple of boxes where boxes shouldn't be, but they were just there for a moment. They weren't staying there. They weren't living there. They were just kind of there. Well, she comes over and obviously OHS concerned, tells me to get the boxes out of the way. Her manner was adversarial and I didn't take it well. I didn't react. I just said firmly that I understand her concern and I appreciate her problem, but if she could just see the issue from my side and have a little bit of patience, I will sort it out. I was really unhappy with my reaction because it was visceral. I I felt it. I didn't express it outwardly, but inside, I felt like I had been sharp and cruel to her. So after about 10 minutes, because she was working behind me, so people behind me is just not a great feeling ever. But knowing that somebody is mad behind me is really uh, not just distracting. It's it's harmful. It hurts. It's um, It's a real feeling of, not being safe. Um, So I go over to her and I just, I want to clear the air. So I just tell her that I am completely at fault for my tone. And I wanted to apologize to her unreservedly. I didn't bring up the fact that her passive aggression was, was like daggers in my head. I didn't bring up the fact that I have uh, anxiety and conditions like this. I didn't bring up the fact that uh, I have mental health issues. I just apologized unreservedly. Went up to her and said, I am really sorry about my tone. Uh, And she said, yeah, well, it was, you didn't let me make my point. And I said, okay, but I'm just apologizing for the way I spoke to you. I feel that was inappropriate. Well, she goes off. You will listen to me. I am telling you that you will not put those boxes there and you won't let me tell you why. I said, I know you. why. It's an OHS concern. People are bringing heavy equipment by. Of course you want it clear. Well, this is not enough for this woman. She just goes off. She demands that I go into the other room so that she can discipline me properly. I was, by this stage, my fight or flight's kicking in. Honestly, I wanted to smash her. Okay, we'll get back to that in just a moment. I walk out to the senior manager's office, my boss's office. See, this woman is a manager of volunteer of people that work in the sorting section. She's not supposed to have anything to do with me apart from saying hello. Um, she has no authority over me. She is not my superior in any way, shape, or form. As far as I'm concerned, she's a work colleague. So I walk out to the boss's office and he says, is there a problem? And I put my arm out because this woman was behind me and just let her go. And she went ballistic. She's shouting at me. She's screaming at me. I start to shake because I'm being attacked now. She's advancing on me. She's gesturing at me. And she's done another thing which she doesn't realize is she has blocked the only door that I have to get out. So my body is starting to physically react to feeling trapped. And if you know anything about me, if I feel trapped or claustrophobic, I can't deal with it. My fight mode kicks in and I will destroy anybody that is keeping me in this unsafe space. She does not realize that she is in physical danger now and she is going me. I know that I cannot react 
the way that my body wants to. I know that I cannot hurt this woman. But every fiber of my being, every every part of me wanted to grab her and throw her out of my way so that I could go outside and start to breathe again. The manager. This guy will always have my respect and my imagina uh, my 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 respect. He might have my imagination. I don't know what what word I was trying to say. He'll have my respect. Because he just stopped her. You are being really inappropriate. You need to get out of here. You need to go. And then he takes a glance at me and my physical reaction is I am now shaking. I am physically holding myself back. I'm hyperventilating. He's concerned. He thinks I'm in a full-blown mental health emergency. And years ago, I would have been. This hurt. I don't want to describe how my body was shaking and I couldn't speak. What I want to talk about is what my mind did to me in this situation. Now, objectively, you could look at the situation and say, this was bad. This was unwarranted. This was not a stranger running up to me on the street and just screaming at me. This was a situation that I did not help. Uh... You could even argue that I'm at fault for the tone that I was using. That's the nice me. That's the leader in me going, okay, what did I do to make this situation happen? Then there's the logical side of me, and it's the side that the manager of this store um, made me see clearly is the way that she was acting was unacceptable. He said the way that she was advancing on me, gesturing at me, she said if if he was a dude, if she was a dude, um, the manager said I would have expected a fight. Now he was amazing. He was just protecting me. He was, you know, he said, oh, he sent her away. But then he comes to me and he's he's like, you know, I'll shut the door. You just sit in the chair. And now the problem was the chair was facing the door. So I couldn't see anybody. So I had to stand in the back corner of the room so that I can see who's coming at me. I can see that I'm safe. And I've got the chair in front of me. So I'm I'm physically safe. I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes later. I was able to come out and, and, and again, this manager, if, if every manager responded this way to people with mental health crisis, there would be no stigma. This guy was generous. He was kind. And in fact, let me, let me step back a little. So my mind now is saying you failed. You should have been mature enough to know that that woman clearly has some kind of issues. You should have been smart enough and intelligent enough. I mean, for goodness sake, you're a behavioral management person. You're an expert at changing the negative behaviors. How could you get yourself caught in a situation like this? And then I'm mad at myself for the way that my body reacted. And then I'm mad at myself for the thought that I was going to hit a woman. This is what your mind does to you in a critical incident like this. This podcast... (laughs) It's going to be the best I can do this week. But why am I doing it? Because mental illness sucks. And it hurts. But if you don't know what it's like to go through it, if you don't know, if you don't understand a problem, you can't fix it. 
It'd be like putting an air conditioner in front of a caveman. He doesn't know what an air conditioner is. He doesn't have any idea. And the cold air's coming out of it and it's making him cold. What does he do? He doesn't know what to do. And that's how we are with mental illness. We're like cavemen walking around people that are injured and hurt. And because we won't have the conversations, because we can't normalize this discussion, people are suffering. That's what I want to do with this podcast. That's what STP is all about. That's why it's so hard when when people talk about, oh, how many people listen to your podcast? It's like, I don't care. If it was one person that listens, that's all I care about. Now, the other thing that I need to mention is some people have come up to my wife at work and expressed how much they enjoy the podcast. And, and I don't know their names off the top of my hat, but I want to thank them and anybody else that listens to these podcasts, because it helps me. Honestly, I feel a lot better than I did at this than I did at the start. What you've seen today is what a journey can look like. You can see how talking about it can turn an absolute negative into a positive. Now. This might not mean anything to you, but I went back to that workplace the next day just to test out my reactions. I thought I was never going to be able to go back. And I'd already prepared my family, my daughter, who I go there with. I'd already prepared them for the fact that I was potentially not going to go back. I went back and I had no physical reaction that was out of my control. Yeah, I was nervous. And yes, I had to walk past this woman. But I was able to do that. And I went into the manager's office. And again, he was just so kind. So generous. So loving. (laughs) It's a weird word to use. But he didn't look down on me because I'd had a mental health issue. He didn't, he didn't judge me because of that. And he said, mate, I understand if you need to leave. I understand. I, I, th- I think we've lost you. I said, no, no, you haven't. And it was completely because he understood. In the moment of the situation, he responded in a way that protected me and cared for me. And then he followed it up with kindness. And then when he saw saw me next, it was all about, are you okay? Take a couple of weeks off if you need. Whatever you need to do, even if it's to never come back here, that's what I want you to do. Man, if I had had some bosses like that in the public service, probably still be working for them. <laughs> oh God, I don't even know if I'm going to post this. If I do, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. I don't always sit here feeling sorry for myself. STP is all about explaining what it's like to live with mental illness. This one's been tough, but if anything, it's honest. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for listening to Shattered, the podcast. I'd like to thank our producer, Meredith Brosnan, our executive producer, Torian Lau, and the band Adelaide for allowing us to use their song as our theme. Go to shatteredthepodcast.com for more information.